Hey, great to see you again. Didn't know you were going to stop by, but I'm glad you did. And since you're here, welcome. Hi, as you probably know, but if not, I'll let you know, I represent Handle It Handbags. It's a one-of-a-kind creative leather handbag line. And I come to you today to show you a new bag. We make so many different new bags, we want to make sure that you see each one. It's a little difficult to show you each one, to be honest with you, because they come they come frequently and you know so we show you what we can when we can and how we can but before we get started I'm asking can you just sign down below subscribe so that we can continue to come to you or ring the bell which says hey hey you know at least you appreciate what we're showing but again we're glad to see you and of course we're doing that homework for YouTube <laughs> because YouTube wants to be recognized that hey we are here Anyway, today I'm going to talk about another powerful sister, in case you don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me, we name our bags after women of color. Women who have actually done something for us in life, something we can be proud of. Today we're speaking about Amy Jacques Garvey. Before we get into her, I need to show you this bag. This bag of different browns. Look at this handbag here. That's a funky monkey, yes. Quite attractive bag. Yes, she is. A shoulder bag, a crossbody shoulder bag, whichever purpose you want to use it for. I'm going to give you a little shout out to see what this bag actually looks like. I'm going to step back so you can see it better. It's actually pieces of leather that are falling on top of the actual bag. The line you see here is the pocket. There's a pocket here trimmed in a wonderful like burgundy color here to break between the taupe and the beige color. On this side, it's the flip side of the bag. There is no front and no back to this bag. It's all just a fun bag. You can be a crisp crossover bag. Of course, or you can wear it as a shoulder bag. It's up to you. Once it becomes yours, you can wear it any way you want. How's that? But it's a cool bag. It's definitely a one of a kind. So we don't have to look for this bag again anywhere else. The bag has a zip top. Keep your goodies in. It's fully lined. Just to let you know also, while I take that tissue paper out, there are two pockets in the bag, as in most of our bags are. These pockets are made out of leather. You can possibly see a bit, a bit, on both sides. See that? Yes. Because we know how we ladies are, we have things to carry. We've got places to be and things to carry. So, this is a good hurry up bag if you choose because you have where you can put the pockets in the front and the back. But you've got your pocket here, you've got your pocket here, and you've got your two pockets inside. So you step it. I like that. That's an attractive bag and a useful bag. And it definitely will stop traffic. Wonderful bag. Nice shoulder strap on it. Again, everything, as you probably know, is 100% leather, and we're glad to show it to you. I'll bring the bag up closer again so you can see. Of course, you can always see more of this bag at www.handleithandbags.com. She's going to be sitting there waiting for you to come claim her until you do. I'm going to give you a brief write-up about the lady she's named in honor of, who happens to be Amy Euphemia Jaco. Garvey. Yes, that's Marcus Garvey's wife, his second wife, actually. She was born in uh, 1895 and she expired in 1973. She was a Jamaican born journalist and an activist. She was the second wife of Marcus Garvey's and she was one of the pioneering female black journalists and publishers of the 20th century. Amy attended a conference being held by Marcus Garvey and was moved by his words. Soon afterwards, assuming the role of his private secretary and working alongside of him, and the Universal Negro Improvement Association, which is the UNIA. She also became involved in publishing of the Negro World newspaper in Harlem, and as from its inception from August 1918. Now on the 27th of July in 1922, several months after his previous marriage was severed, Marcus and Amy were married for the second time in Baltimore. 
Now, Jaco, she's said to have been Amy. She was Amy Ashworth, <laughs> his previous wife's ch uh, chief bridesmaid. Small world, huh, girlfriend? In the wedding to Garvey. And Ashworth, she attended to go back into the second marriage. She wanted to have it annulled, and it failed. So, leaving Amy Jaco as Garvey's legitimate wife. Nevertheless, Garvey was said to have been an excellent speaker, having toured the country with and without her husband. After making a return from her Western tour, she was scheduled to speak in New York, and Amy was not a part of the program. But even though she was not scheduled to speak at the event, she was allowed to because of the mass outcry by the crowd. Adela believes that Marcus Garvey failed to show any appreciation for his wife, despite her growing fame in the public forum. Amy, however, did not pose an initial threat to Garvey, given her strong beliefs in her position as his wife and the structure of the organization. So she took a back seat, as did other women in the UNIA. The grievances were made in public by UNIA's national convention. Sexism found a means to thrive even in spite of UNIA's commitment to sexual equality. Well, this being the case, women such as Amy Jaco Garvey found a way to become invaluable in the organization. So while supporting her husband's ambition, and you know, she became a focus on her own writings, which made her known within the black community and the official newspaper of the Negro world, okay? So, okay, the black feminist, she emphasizes the importance of black women being educated in different aspects of life in order to have a brighter future for the next generation to live in a society where black women aren't seen as less than others. That's a powerful sister. That's about women empowerment. And that took place back in the early 1900s. And we're still having the same problem today. My, my, my. What a small world, isn't it? Again, I'm going to show you this attractive bag. Let you see it again. So that, let anyone else see it. Because after you get it, of course, no one else is going to be able to have the bag. Because it's yours. Of course, the bag can be duplicated in a sense. But be totally different colors. But it will still be a hot bag. You can believe that. So, just want to show you what we're doing today. Again, it's Amy Garbus. Amy Garbus. <laughs> Uh, how you say Garvey, not Garvis. This is the bag named in honor of her. It's a portable bag too, but it's a funky bag because look at that leather. Yes, that is the leather. Leather of the leather. <laughs> Want you to appreciate it, enjoy it. You'll enjoy it more once you get it home. Certainly I'll ship it to you without a problem. Certainly no problem. Yes, it'll get there, and you'll enjoy it, and you'll let me know, or let everybody know, hey, I love my bag. Again, this is Handle of Handbags, checking in, showing you another freak, funky, funky bag <laughs> that we love for you to see. And that's, of course, that's for people who have, you know, like that creativity in mind. You know, just don't get that same bag where you see a thousand of them. You need to have that one of a kind. That's what makes us an individual. I thank you again www.handleinhandbags.com Have a wonderful remainder of the day and thank you. Good day.